So year nine is continuing with the writing to advise. We're looking at how we can use argument and counter argument in your writing. This may be something that you've come across um, when you've done some persuasive writing in year eight. Um, so our learning objective to understand how to write a counter argument, keywords, argue, counter argue, connective and persuade. So if you want to persuade someone to take your advice, you need to have answers ready for their objections and arguing against a point is known as a counter argument. We always know if we're giving advice to somebody, then they've probably already got some ideas in the head about why they can't follow our advice and yes, but this and yes, but that. So you need to be ready for those and give your counter argument. OK, we're going to have an act a go at an activity where we're matching up some comments made by Group A with some answers given by Group B. Let's have a look. So Group A comments that they've made. You can have a good party without alcohol. It's illegal to buy alcohol under the age of 18. Alcohol affects your judgment, making you do things you might regret later and alcohol leads to trouble with the police. Some comments that Group B have made. Drinking is part of growing up. No one bothers about age limits. Everyone does silly things when they're young. It doesn't matter. I've just noticed a typo in there. It should say silly things, not silly things. Number three, you have more fun when you drink. There's nothing wrong with having a laugh. And number four, not everyone who drinks gets into trouble with the police. Okay, so we've got eight different statements there made by different people and what we've got to have a go at doing is matching them up so which of the statements in group a would you match with the statements in group b so have a go at that you don't need to write out the whole thing at this stage you can just put a equals three if they're the two that you think match up so our answers then so a does match up with number three B matched up with number one, C matched up with number two, and D matched up with number four. So when we're writing arguments and counter argument, you need a comma to separate the two sides of the argument, and you need a connective to signal the start of the counter argument. Let's have a look at this example. You say you have more fun when you have a drink, comma, but you should remember that it can lead to lots of problems, okay? So we've got the argument in red. You say that you have more fun when you have a drink. Then we've got our comma and our connective. So we've got the comma after drink. Then we've got the word but. You could have used the word however there as well as but. And then the counter argument in green. So it's the argument that you're putting back to the person that's saying you have more fun when you have a drink. OK, hopefully that makes sense. So an activity then. So the answers that we wrote for that first activity where we matched up A and three and so on, I would like you to have a go at rewriting each pair of arguments and answers you matched as arguments and counter arguments. So remember, we have an argument, comma, connective and counter argument. So we've got an example here. It can be good fun to have a drink, comma, but remember, you can still have a good party without alcohol. So try and rewrite the other statements that you've matched up as counter arguments. So use this formula, argument, comma, connective, and you can use but or however as your connective, and then your counter argument. We've got a few other wo words down here or phrases that you could use instead of but or however. We've got on the other hand, although, alternatively, and then but and however that we've already mentioned. Okay, you should have a go at that now. That should take you probably only about five minutes to have a go at those. Our 
Our main task then, we're going to write a letter, um, a response to a bored and lonely teenager. Um, it's a, an agony uncle letter. If you think back to when we were doing Romeo and Juliet and we did the agony aunt letters when we were responding to Balthazar and thinking about how Balthazar would be feeling that he was to blame for the deaths of Romeo and Juliet and you wrote advice letters then persuading him that it really wasn't his fault. So we're going to be advising a bored and lonely teenager here. So let's have a look at the letter. Dear Paul, I need some advice about dealing with my parents. Everyone else in my class goes to parties and drinks and has a good time. My parents won't let me go to parties because they say everyone will be drinking and I'm not allowed to. They say there's always trouble at parties where people drink and they don't want me drinking under the age of 18. I'm missing out on a lot of fun because my parents are mean and old fashioned. What can I do, a bored and lonely teenager? If we look at the annotations around the side, we can see at the beginning, um, the bored and lonely teenager introduces his problem that everyone else goes to parties and drinks and has a good time and then elaborates. So that means gives more information about the problem on the next sentence. My parents won't let me go because they say everyone will be drinking and I'm not allowed to. He continues to give the parents objections. They say there's always trouble at parties where people drink and they don't want me drinking on the age of 18. And then the writer's feelings are put at the end of this letter. I'm missing out on a lot of fun because my parents are mean and old fashioned. And then finishes off by asking, the, uh, asking for advice. What can I do? So you're going to be writing as Paul. You're Paul and you're giving advice to the bored and lonely teenager. Let's have a look how we're going to do that. So you must show that you sympathize with the teenager and agree that he or she has a point before you go to the other side of the argument. So you're not going to be completely agreeing with the teenager and saying, God, your parents are outrageous. I don't know why you don't move and move and live with somebody else. That's not the sort of advice we're giving. You need to show that you agree with how they're feeling, but then you're going to be put her in the counter argument where you're showing you understand the parent's point of view as well. You need to help him to realize that his parents might have a point. You should help him to understand that perhaps he is too young to drink alcohol and expect that he might not be very pleased with your advice because you're not necessarily telling him what he wants to hear, but you're just trying to give him advice and show him about different people's perspectives here, helping him to understand his parents' point of view. You could give him some other choices to make as well, okay? So let's have a look. Paragraph one then. You need to write an opening statement to show that you understand Bored and Lonely's problem. Refer to the points made in the first two sentences of the letter. So you could start off with something like, Dear Bored and Lonely, I understand your problem. It must be really difficult for you not being able to go to parties that your friends are going to. Okay, so you're putting in that first bit and then you might use words like however or but as you move on to show that his parents may have a point too. The parents make three objections. You need to counter argue each of those in turn. So look at what the parents have been saying. You need to give counter arguments about each of those. And then in paragraph three, you need to write a concluding statement. It doesn't need to be a long paragraph that tries to persuade bored and lonely to accept your advice and counter argue the point made at the end of the letter. Some writing tips for doing this then. You need to use a friendly tone. You're not being mean. You're not being trying to be too harsh. Try and keep it friendly. Write mainly in the present tense. Use connectives that signal the start of your counter argument. Remember, we, when you've used an argument, you use a comma and then a connective like but, however, on the other hand, to show the start of your counter argument. And remembering, as I've just said, using the comma to separate the argument from the counter argument. Okay, 
So that's what I'd like you to have a go at doing, writing your advice letter to bored and lonely and using counter arguments show that you understand his point of view, but also you will get where his parents are coming from. You're trying to give him advice on maybe listening to what his parents have got to say. OK, you should spend about 15 minutes on this. Again, as with all of your work, if you want to send it to me, you can email it to me. My email address is on the school website. If you're not sure about it or not sure how to email it, get your parents to do so for you. And you can also put it on folder under the, uh, the section with my name in it in the English bit. And I'll be able to find your work there. I'm checking that regularly. So I'm able to see the work that you've been doing if you've put it in that section. OK, off you go.